Well, guess what? In 2021, I turned 50. Oh, wait, hold on. Can't read a word of this. Bifocals. Ah, yeah, my reading glasses. That's much better. Now, what was I doing? It's going to ask you to subscribe. Oh, no, wait, 50 years old. So, yeah, I'm old. I'm Generation X, formerly MTV watching, you know, back when they played music. Child of the 1980s. But wait, what does that mean? Does a technology career really end at age 35? I mean, that's brutal. What is this, Logan's Run? Yeah, brutal. In all seriousness, your career doesn't really have to end at 35, 40 in hardcore technology. I mean, it can end much earlier if you do it right. What I'm going to do in this video is just talk about the different decades as I went through my career, but we're not gonna talk so much about my career because it started in the 1990s and that's, that's just ancient. The internet barely existed. So I'll talk about some things that I've seen with some of my interns, other younger employees that I've talked to, and then provide kind of my perspective of somebody who has, has been through this whole thing. So let's start at the very beginning. I mean, in my early formative years, if I got a technology toy under the Christmas tree, it looked like one of these. Anybody rec recognize either of those two toys? They were a lot of fun back in the day. If you've watched E.T., you know this really came in handy. But the first real honest-to-goodness computer I had was a Commodore 64. Now, in these days, if you're going to get into something early, and by early I mean high school or before you start hardcore learning in the traditional sense, I recommend really getting into JavaScript because you can do that just through a browser. You don't need to install fancy programming languages. Get right into Python, see what happens. Get right into JavaScript, see what happens. Now, an example that I will give is Pretham Prasoon. I have followed him for a couple of years. He's 17 and already has over 100K Twitter followers and has GitHub and gotten into a lot of this stuff. There, he's not the only example, there are others. But the most important thing, no matter when you jump into this progression of technology, is do not worry about imposter syndrome. I worry about imposter syndrome. The people that I think make me feel like an imposter, guess what? They worry about imposter syndrome. Okay, your 20s. This is an exhilarating and terrifying time. You need to make some really important decisions. And it's not like if you choose wrong, it's going to throw off the trajectory of the rest of your entire life. And it won't. I mean, I went to college, dropped out. It's fine. Your life continues. But always think about where you're going to get on to the next step. There is a bit of sort of a squid game effect going on here. When you were in high school, you were surrounded by a lot of people like at the beginning of that game. And compared to them, maybe you looked really smart. Maybe you didn't, maybe you were a late bloomer. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But as you progress, the peers, if you're doing good and moving into more and more select levels, the people that you're surrounded by is a smaller and smaller group and you look less and less smart next to those guys. And you don't wanna ever be the smartest person in the room. You can learn and people are smart in different ways. So you need to pick a route because you need to acquire skills. Either you're going to learn them on your own, you're gonna have a MOOC or a boot camp teach, them, teach you them, or you're going to go to university. All of those are viable options. If you're gonna go into the university system, don't go into debt up to your, up to your eyeballs. That's part of the reason I dropped out of the university system on my first try. I was trying to pay for university without a student loan debt. And back when I was going into college, it was actually fashionable to take on student loan debt. But I never did take on a student loan. I took side jobs and other things, uh, side hustles, I think you call them in today's language, to pay for things. But then I got so involved in learning the latest technologies that were beyond what my university was teaching me at that point that I, my, again, my GPA suffered and I dropped out after three years. Not necessarily advising that. The thing that I am advising is what direction you pick, be it a university, be it a, 
a MOOC, be it completely self-study, do your homework. Make sure that the boot camp is really going to actually teach you something and realize a lot of the responsibility is on you to learn. Some of those boot camps that I've talked to, they don't even have evaluation criteria. So my dog and I could essentially get the certificate if we entered together. Contribute to social media. I'll throw out another example here of somebody that I really admire in that area. Her name is Quinn Tran. I see her postings pop up on LinkedIn all the time and she she is already off to a phenomenal start. The number of followers she has on Medium and growing on Twitter, she's doing awesome. She's rocking the social media. If you're in university, get those internships. Very, very important. Those will alleviate your experience problem because as soon as you get out, you can point to some internships that you've done. I never actually did a internship. Okay, let's talk about your 30s. Maybe you're entry level even in your 30s. That's okay. I've worked with interns even in their 30s. They may have started on something else and gone back into university. Now, if you've gotten that critical first job in your 20s, now it's maybe your late 20s, early 30s. It's time to move up to that next level. And you, you want to not focus on a track like I should be promoted every two years or something like that. If you were promoted every two years, you'll be CEO probably sometime in your 40s. So obviously that track doesn't necessarily happen for everybody. I've worked mostly in big companies towards my latter career and startups in my early career. So you, you can go any direction you want to. You can also be the CEO and start your own startup. None of these paths are wrong. I have high respect for anybody that makes it in any direction. If, you're, if you've not immediately just jumped to CEO and started your own company, you move up by gaining experience and showing that you can alleviate your manager, your boss, of concerns that they normally had to deal with. The more you can take work away from your boss and cause them to just not have to focus on it, the more you make your boss's life easier, the more likely you are to move into that next level, whether it's at your company or a different company. And if your boss is threatened by you growing and getting better and moving up into their org, then you need to either move into a, I mean, lateral and above, or you need to find another boss. Another thing in your 30s that I got into for the first time, this works in your 40s too, is I jumped into social media. I mean, my first YouTube videos were so cringy. Here you see a simple neuron, but they got me started and that's how I learned how to do this. Don't worry too much. I mean, people are going to always say mean things when you post stuff onto social media. Half the time they're people who weren't brave enough to just do this on, on your own. It's my 30s is when I got married. I, I don't know, 20s, I didn't pay too much attention to members of the opposite gender, and honestly, they didn't pay much attention to me. I did meet the love of my life, and that has been absolutely phenomenal. We got married in a helicopter in Las Vegas. So your 40s, this is a lot of interesting things happen at this time. This is when you continue to sort of grow in responsibility, hopefully, or you kind of plateau at a certain technical level and you become kind of a mid-level software engineer your whole life. Believe me, that's how my 40s started. But this is also where a lot of your technologies that were your bread and butter become dust. CGI bin. Breaking the 640k barrier. EMS memory versus XMS memory. I could do a whole video on that. VT100 user interfaces. DLL hell. C++ with 8386 assembly language because, you know, C++ was just too slow. I mean, lots of these things. Now the compiler is smarter than I am. I, I wouldn't even touch assembler. OCX controls, Java applets, UML and OOP hell. 
Good grief. People went nuts with decorators. And so all these things, some of them I was glad to put six feet under and bury. Some of them, I don't know. It, you, you tend to see your favorite technology now going the wayside. Maybe you liked creating websites in C Sharp. But at the point that you start to say, why do I need this new technology? I can make the old technology do this. I can make the website with CGI bin. That's the beginning of the end and be, be careful. Also think about your company and does it let you move up as a individual contributor? Maybe you don't want 30 people under you and become a vice president. If your company requires you to have a large, large department to get to those higher pay bands, and that's not what you want to do, that's not what you're good at, then you might need to find a different company. I was able to move up into the VP ranks without even one person reporting to me. Now I manage a small team tackling very complex technological problems. So it's just whatever you want to build that into, make sure that your company is aligned with that. Okay, your 50s. So I've just started this decade. So what will it what will it be like for me? I will probably try to continue to build my thought leadership, my social media presence, and then take on more and more technological problems with my employer. That's that's really what I help them I help them solve. I help them adapt new technologies at a rate that makes that makes sense for us. And learn some of the basics of finance, personal finance and investing. Really, your your strategy for investing should fit on a three by five index card. The book that really inspired me at a younger age is The Millionaire Next Door. I followed this pretty closely with some 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 deviation. But if you live below your means, I mean, for example, I have saved money pretty religiously, kind of a super saver at times, have built up net worth in excess of a million dollars. That sounds quite cool, but my house is quite modest, my cars are quite modest, but I own them in their entirety. And that lets you, that gives you freedom and flexibility that you're not in deep, deep trouble if a job or part of your career does not go as you planned. I realize life gets in the way, but it's certainly something to spend some focus on so that you can build up some degree of financial independence as you go through the decades. Thank you for watching this video, and if you found this helpful, I usually talk more on the specifics down in the trenches of the technologies of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like if this video was useful to you. Thank you for watching and good luck in your own career. No matter what point you're starting it or stopping it or transitioning it, keep the eye on, on where you want to be and keep, keep pushing through that. And thank you for watching.